So the uh, big uh, data risk when it comes to social media platforms is not connected to the first category of data, which is data that citizens willingly upload to these social media platforms. So when a citizen tweets, that does not really cause a security risk because what the citizen is really doing is exercising the right to publicity. However, when the citizen is scrolling over an image or watching a particular video, the social media platform is observing a variety of things. How long did you hesitate on the image? Which part of the video did you rewind and watch two times or three times over? That's really deeply personal information. And if such information was compromised and put in the wrong hands, then people could embarrass you in a variety, variety of ways. So that's the real risk that these social media platforms are violating what is known as the data minimization principle. They are collecting as much data as they can on us because they're convinced that the more data that they can collect, they will be able to target us with advertising in a more effective way. But along with that, what emerges is this massive security risk. And the Cambridge Analytica episode is an excellent example of how even if the firm, which is Facebook, did everything correct and kosher as far as security standards are concerned, one of the ways in which the criminals got in is the legit entrance. That was a legit call to a legit API that Facebook was provisioning and that was the point of compromise. If the regulatory environment is configured correctly and in the GDPR, for instance, data minimization is one of the principles of the regulation. And if it is determined that Facebook is collecting data for which they don't have a user-facing feature, there is no way the user is benefiting from the collection of a particular type of data, then that type of data collection will be deemed illegal under that regulation. So basically, uh, the threats of fines, increased liability, enforcement of the data minimization principle, all of this uh, helps these firms become more and more conservative about what they do. And when there is a breach, the consequences won't be that catastrophic. So what we need in India is a omnibus horizontal data protection regulation that is interoperable with the GDPR, that broadly meets the same policy objectives as the GDPR, but what we definitely don't want is a carbon copy of the GDPR, primarily because in India we don't really have a history to data protection, while in the European Union they have almost a 37 year history to data protection law and regulation. Therefore, the regulated, which is the firms, they have also learned over what is almost four decades, how to behave in the market in an appropriate way. The regulators also have evolved tremendously and they're also supremely capable and therefore they can actually enforce a very complicated regulation. Uh, but in the Indian context, it is tabula rasa or blank slate. We are beginning, uh, we are making a fresh beginning. Therefore, uh, we have two opportunities. One is we have a leapfrogging opportunity. We can take the benefit of new technologies and new ways of doing it. And we have no legacy problem. So therefore, we can move everybody very quickly to the lat latest uh, situation. One area where there is definitely going to be in innovation in the Indian context is around the concept of information fiduciaries. So in India, we have 30% uh, of the population that is illiterate. We have only 10% of the population that speak English. Therefore, it is unlikely that citizens will be able to protect their own interest 
when it comes to data protection. Therefore, we must have intermediaries and many people are talking about intermediaries. There is a lawyer in Bangalore called Navi who talks about data trusts. There is Rahul Mathan who talks about knowledgeable intermediaries. There is iSpirit that talks about uh, consent brokers. So a variety of models for information fiduciaries have emerged. And again, this is something that doesn't exist in the European uh, model because there it is expected that the average consumer will protect their own interest. Here we cannot make those assumptions. So therefore there will be new ideas and new opportunity for business and innovation. For more updates from CXO TV, please like and subscribe to our channel.